With dozens of new features, Apple is really focusing on better performance with better power consumption with the new Apple Silicon Max. While providing a more robust machine learning environment with numerous enhancements around security and the recovery of the macOS. With enhanced support for multiple versions of macOS running on a system, you can enjoy any flavor of macOS you'd like. Apple is no stranger to ARM-based architecture. You probably own a device powered by ARM chips already. The iPhone, iPad, Apple Watch, and Apple TV all use advanced RISC machine ARM-based processors instead of Intel chips. In fact, the MacBook Pro, MacBook Air, iMac Pro, Mac Mini, and Mac Pro are all already equipped with ARM processors in the form of T1 and T2 chips that power Touch ID, Secure Enclave, and other features. The company announced that it intends to fully transition the entire Mac line to custom ARM-based Apple Silicon processors within two years, but is committed to supporting Intel-based Macs long into the future. The common architecture across all products making it far easier for developers to write and optimize software for the entire Apple ecosystem, allowing us to natively run iOS and iPad apps on Silicon Mac hardware. Apple is keeping Intel alive in our Macs by continuing to offer support for the Thunderbolt USB standard. Users will still be able to run Intel apps on ARM-based Macs thanks to Rosetta 2, a translation process that runs in the background and is invisible to the user. It will be interesting to see how well these apps run in comparison to native apps. Using Universal 2 application binaries, developers will be able to easily create a single app that taps into native power and performance of the new Macs with Apple Silicon while still supporting Intel-based Macs. With everything built into Xcode 12, such as native compilers, editors, and debugging tools, developers will be able to get their apps up and running in a matter of days. Adobe already has Photoshop and Lightroom running smoothly on Apple Silicon, and Microsoft already has Word, Excel, and PowerPoint working natively on Apple Silicon machines. To help developers get started with Apple Silicon, Apple launched the Universal App Quick Start program, which provides access to documentation, forum support, beta versions, and macOS Big Sur and Xcode 12. And you can apply for a Developer Transition Kit DTK, a Mac development system based on Apple's A12Z Bionic system on a chip. It does cost about 500 bucks for the DTK Mac setup, and please note, that the Mac must be returned back to Apple when you're done doing your development, as outlined on the bottom of the page. For more information in regards to developing for Apple Silicon, please visit the link on the screen. Also, download the Apple Developer application for iOS or Mac to watch the WWDC sessions they are all in the app and you can watch them at your earliest convenience. One of the biggest benefits of Intel based Macs is the ability to dual boot windows. Apple has said it does not plan to support boot camp on its future Macs. We're not direct booting an alternate operating system, Apple software engineering chief Craig Federighi said. Purely virtualization is the route. Microsoft is not planning to make an ARM version of Windows 10. To make matters worse, it also remains unclear whether macOS will be able to support Windows virtualization via third-party tools such as Parallels and VMware Fusion. Apple demoed a running Linux distribution in Parallels. Let's hope in the future we can virtualize Windows as well. With a unified login experience, FileVault and SmartCard use become a lot more end-user and enterprise-friendly. With always-on volume encryption and secure hibernation, you can be assured your data is safe. Write XOR 
execute is a memory protection policy whereby every page in a processes or kernel's address space may be either writable or executable, but not both. Kernel integrity protection, hardware enforced when the kernel is initialized. No modifications can be made and no new code can be loaded. Pointer authentication. Many exploits come down to convincing code kernel to access a pointer that was crafted by the attacker. The purpose of pointer authentication is to attach a cryptographic signature to pointer values. Those signatures can then be verified before a pointer is used. Device isolation. Input output memory management unit where memory is protected from malicious devices that are attempting direct memory access attacks. A device cannot read or write to memory that has not been explicitly allocated mapped for it. With per OS security policy, you can be ensured that each Mac OS that you got running on your system is safe and secure. macOS Recovery now has a startup UI with integrated startup manager to replace the startup key commands for things like target disk mode and recovery boot. Mac sharing mode, which is SMB based and requires authentication, has replaced starting up with the T key in target disk mode. All old startup key combinations have been removed. You now start up in recovery holding down the power button, which gains you access to the new system recovery and security policy options for your system. You have full security, which is default, and reduced security. Full security offers best-in-class security that now includes external disk booting. Reduced security allows any Mac OS, whether signed or not, and allows notarized third-party kernel extensions. And with configurable security using the CRS util command, you can modify secure boot root volume authentication and system integrity protection. Recovering your Mac has never been easier or faster with the new system recovery, which is a small separate container holding a small Mac OS to reinstall Mac OS and Mac OS recovery all without needing internet recovery. And if your system recovery ever gets hosed or removed, you can use Apple Configurator 2 to erase and install Mac OS, including the system recovery. My guy, Mr. Macintosh, is planning to do some video walkthroughs this week of the DTK and recovery rebuilds and installs, so go check them out. Are you ready for Mac OS, Big Sur? Big Sur enables the transition to Apple Silicon. Here are a couple videos to help you get going. Have an awesome week, y'all. Take care.